Dear learner, welcome to this episode on Civil Aviation in India Part 2. The foundation of commercial aviation in India was laid by J.R.D. Tata during the pre-independence period. After the open sky policy was declared in 1992, several private carriers entered into Indian sky. The aviation industry is largely dependent on overseas foreign tourists, the growing number of young software professionals, senior government officials, corporate executives and businessmen. The sudden surge in the airline business is because of simplification of rules and regulations, growing number of middle class Indians and creation of new airports and expansion of the existing airports. With this surge in aviation activities, there is also a great need for trained manpower. In this episode, we are going to learn about SWAT analysis of Indian aviation, airline sector in India, Pavan Hans Helicopters Limited, manpower requirements in Indian aviation and aviation education and training in India. First one, SWAT analysis of Indian aviation. SWAT that means SWOT refers to strengths, weakness, opportunities and threats to Indian aviation. The following table shows the analysis of SWAT to Indian aviation. First one, strengths. Strengths of Indian aviation includes growing population and middle class, long history of civil aviation, good safety record, growth of inbound and outbound traffic, increased integration with the global economy, cross country travel by students. Next is opportunities. Opportunities includes development of India as a prime tourism and medical service destination need for an aviation hub between Dubai and Singapore, disaster relief and medical evacuation, rapidly growing economy, dispersed tourist attractions and indigenous entrepreneurship. Next is the weakness of Indian aviation. This includes high costs of operation, inadequate trained manpower, Absence of MRO facilities, poor organizational culture in national career and lack of R&D. Threats of Indian aviation includes congestion of airspace, LCCs of foreign countries, global terrorism, development of substitutes and international factors. Second is airline sector in India. The airline landscape in India has transformed radically in recent years. In 2003, there were just four carriers. They are Air India, Indian Airlines, Jet Airways and Air Sahara. All operating full service models. The private carriers in those days were limited to operating domestic routes only. In 2014, there are 5 air carriers operating 9 different brands. They are Air India plus Alliance Air plus Air India Express, Jet Airways plus Jet Connect plus Jet Light, Indigo, Spice Jet and Go Air. Air Asia had announced its joint venture with Tata Sons and Telestra Trade Place in February 2013. Air Asia India is a 49 is to 30 is to 21 joint venture among Malaysian carrier Air Asia, Tata Sons and Telestra Trade Place. Next is Air India Limited. Air India Limited was incorporated under the Companies Act 1956 on 30th March of 2007 and is owned by the Government of India. The company was created to facilitate the merger of the two main state 
owned airlines in India, Air India with its subsidiary Air India Express and Indian Airlines together with its subsidiary Alliance Air. Next is Hotel Corporation of India Limited. Air India, Air Transport Services Limited, Air India Engineering Services Limited, Air India Charter Limited, IAL Airport Service Limited, Airline Allied Services Limited and Vayudut Limited. Next is Pavan Hans Helicopters Limited. Pavan Hans Limited, the national helicopter company of India, was incorporated in 1985. Presently, the shareholding of the government of India is 51% and Oil and Natural Gas Corporation is 49%. Pavan Hans was incorporated with the primary objective of providing helicopter support services to the oil sector for its offshore exploration operations, surveys in remote and hilly areas and other charter services for promotion of tourism. The Pavan Hans Helicopters Limited is one of the leading helicopter companies in India and it is known for its reliable helicopter operations. Its objective is to provide helicopter support services to oil sector for its offshore exploration operations, services in remote and hilly areas as well as charter services for promotion of travel and tourism. The registered office of the company is located at New Delhi and its regional offices are at Mumbai and New Delhi. PHHL is the first ISO 9001. 2000 certified aviation company in India. Pavan Hans has played a vital role in the growth story of the helicopter industry in India. Pavan Hans has developed helicopters for major pilgrimage sites in India to make travel simple and safe for pilgrims who visit these shrines every year. Some of Pavan Hans services include Helicopter travel to Mata Vaishnava Devi Shrine and Kedarnath Ji Shrine. Mata Vaishnava Devi Shrine. Pavan Hans has deployed two belly helicopters of six seaters at Katra for the pilgrim visits to Mata Vaishnava Devi Shrine. The pilgrims who visit this holy shrine can use the services of the helicopters from Katra to Sanji Chat and back. Every day around 60 trips are made by Pavan Ansi helicopters carrying almost 500 passengers safely to and from the shrine. Pavan Hans provides travel to the holy shrine within minutes and has also been instrumental in bringing down the costs of this travel considerably for a round trip. Pavan Hans arrange for priority darshan for the pilgrims at rupees 500 are or at the rate decided by the shrine board. The company was awarded a three-year contract for these visits in April 2008. During 2008 April to February 2009, Pavan Hans earned revenue of Rs 12.28 crores by transporting more than 1 lakh passengers to and from the shrine. Next is Kedarnath Shrine. Pavan Hans has also made it convenient for the pilgrims to visit the Kedarnath Ji Shrine at the reasonable ticket cost of Rs. 7000. Pavan Hans arranges for priority darshan for the pilgrims at the rate decided by the Kedarnath Shrine Board. The company deploys bell helicopters during the season May to June and September to October from Fatah to Kedarnath Shrine. Pavan Hans carried more than 12,500 passengers and earned revenue of Rs 4.6 crores during the last season from the service to the shrine. The services have also started from to Kedarnath as charter flights. Next is manpower requirements for Indian aviation. 
aviation industry in India is expected to make a significant growth by 2020 as per the estimates of ICAO organization that is nothing but International Civil Aviation Organization. The civil aviation sector is facing acute manpower shortage especially in the technical cadre. There are around 40 approved flying training institutes in the country out of which 17 are functional. The training of commercial pilot is a time consuming process. At present only 100 pilots graduate from these flying schools every year. On the short term demand basis there would be a requirement of at least 150 pilots per year as replacements for retirements and normal attrition. For the airlines shortage of pilots would result in higher pilot salaries putting pressures on their revenue margins. Director General of Civil Aviation DGCA has permitted the foreign pilots to fly aircrafts on domestic circuits to mitigate the shortage of trained pilots in India. However, that is not the long term solution given the growth of Indian aviation sector. There is also a shortage of flight engineers and technicians with airlines resorting to poaching just as in case of pilots. At present, there are 45 DGCA approved training schools located all over India in the field of aircraft maintenance engineering and training. Though aircraft maintenance engineers AMEs institutes produce about 5000 students every year, they provide only basic training for issuance of basic license. These students are utilized as technicians as they do not have experience with heavy air aircraft and do not have typewriter license. The candidates passing out of AME institutes need to undergo a minimum one year experience in the heavy aircraft and pass DGCA examination to get typewriter license. Due to shortage of typewriter license holders, the aviation industry faces scarcity of engineers. Currently, foreign engineers are being inducted in Indian civil aviation to bridge this gap. For air traffic controller, the Roy Paul committee which looked into air traffic management in 2005 reported over 280 vacancies. The gap has stated to be widened three times. Civil Aviation Training College at Allahabad is only the such institute which imparts ATC training. The training at the Civil Aviation Training College Allahabad lasts six months. It has 12 simulators each of which can train only 10 people at a time. So, in a year only around 300 can be trained. However, the estimated shortfall is 600. The other constraint is the shortage of instructors at the training institute. The basic qualification for an ATC is B.Tech in Telecom or Electronics or Radio Engineering or MSc in Electronics. There is an urgent need for enhancing the infrastructure and other requirements for training institutes. The training institutes should tie up with various airlines and the financial institutions enabling the institutes to scale up operations and also increase the absorption of candidates for airline operations. India also needs to reassess the training period, modules and examinations and bring these at par with international standards. In addition, government has taken various steps including increasing the retirement age of pilots to 65 years, setting up of training institute in Maharashtra, upgradation and modernization of infrastructure at the Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Uran Academy to enhance its training capacity from 40 to 100 pilots and reduce the training period. To cater to the shortfall in the raising demand of trained ATCs, a new training academy has to be established on similar lines of the one existing in Allahabad. It would be 
prudent to reassess the eligibility criteria and to allow science graduates to appear for the ATC as per the pattern followed in the European countries. This step would broad base the number of candidates thus increasing the number of eligible candidates for the formal training. To upgrade and increase the blossoming of the technical and engineering academics for various aviation disciplines, it may be prudent to provide fiscal incentives like land at concessional rates, duty exemption in the import of training equipments, income tax holidays, etc. to augment the necessary institutional infrastructure. Pilots and airline pilots in particular need to be trained as older ones retire. However, for training the pilots, there is an acute shortage of qualified flying instructors. The aspiring commercial pilot license CPL holders are not keen to opt for a career as flying instructors. This shortage of flight instructors would eventually feed into a shortage of pilots. The depth of flight instructors is largely due to relatively low paying nature of the job. To retain flying instructors at these flying schools, compensation and other benefits need to improve. Contracts associating instructors and the academies for certain minimum years could be explored. To ensure that the flying institutes have access to competent instructors, the government may make it mandatory for every Indian commercial pilot to devote a certain percentage of his time which would be remunerated to provide training. The step can be implemented till the time there is a shortage of pilots in the industry. The government may also consider increasing the age limit of the flight instructors with subject to medical fitness till such time there is a shortage of pilots. This extension however should not entitle the person to fly commercial aircraft. DGCA on its part has undertaken certain measures to facilitate availability of more chief flight instructors, flight instructor in charges by redefining eligibility criteria and also by obtaining qualified flight instructors from defense. A civil aviation requirement has also been issued which permits pilots holding instructors rating to impart training up to the age of 65 years. Flying requirements for issue of CPL has been reduced and the age of pilots who can operate commercial aircraft has been increased from 60 to 65 years. Next is aviation education and training in India. Under that the first university is Rajiv Gandhi Aviation University. Ministry of Civil Aviation, Government of India is in the process of setting up Rajiv Gandhi National Aviation University RGNAU to cater to the growing educational and training requirements of the civil aviation sector in its entire dimension. The main objective for setting up the university is to create and disseminate knowledge that facilitate progress and excellence in the field of aviation. The university will be committed to developing technical and managerial manpower to respond to the phenomenal growth of aviation sector in the country. The proposed university would have world class facilities ensuring minimum standards of aviation skills. The proposed aviation university is expected to be a gateway of progress for the Indian aviation industry. Next is Indira Gandhi Rashtriya Uran Academy, which was set up in 1985, functions under the Ministry of Civil Aviation, Government of India. Through its governing council, it is located at district Rai Bareli, Uttar Pradesh and it has entered into a management contract with the global aviation giant Canadian Aviation Electronics Canada to improve its standard 
to world class. The refresher courses for all chief flying instructors, pilot instructor in charge of flying clubs are conducted regularly. The pilot training to candidates of Indian Airlines, Border Security Force, Coast Guard candidates, Indian Air Force and Indian Navy is also provided by IGRUA as and when required. Candidates intake is planned in such a way that IGRUA could be able to pass out over 100 candidates in a year. It remains as an epitome of standardization and excellence in flying training with a potential to become the first air university of the country. IGRUA provides on the job training to the candidates undergoing AME diploma in various Indian private institutes. The main objective of the academy is to improve the flying training standards in the civil aviation industry and to impart line oriented flying training of international standards as per international civil aviation organization norms. The students are earned thoroughly for easy transition to airline industry. Next is CAE Global Academy Gondia. CAE Global Academy Gondia is the newest and most modern flight school in India. It opened two years ago to train aspiring airline pilots. It is also known as National Flying Training Institute Private Limited. The school is a joint venture of AAI and CAE. CAE Global Academy Gondia is a member of the CAE Global Academy, the largest worldwide network of ab insure flight training organization with 11 flight academies on 5 continents. CAE Global Academy Gondia or NFTI offers a first class training and environment focused on developing one to become an airline pilot. Training resources include modern trainer aircraft, they are Diamond DA-40 and DA-42, advanced flight simulations, training devices, well equipped classrooms, extensive online materials and a highly experienced and dedicated instructional staff and academy management team. The CAE Global Academy Gondia or NFTI is located in Gondia, Maharashtra about a three hour car drive east of Nagpur and accessible by train or by air. CAE's global best practice training methodology, simulation based training and flight training to meet and exceed Directorate General of Civil Aviation and International Civil Aviation Organization guidelines. The new CAE Global Academy Gondia campus features state of the art classrooms, training devices and aircraft as well as comfortable air conditioned accommodations. The new helicopter Abbey Insure program will incorporate about a dozen training helicopters as well as flight and navigation procedure trainers. Conclusion Air transport has contributed to the rapid growth in India's international trade in recent decades by offering reliable and faster mode of transport services to move products and personnel across long distance. Therefore, sustaining a viable aviation industry is vital if the economy is too cheap or full benefits of the future growth in foreign trade and investment. Industries that rely most heavily on air transport for their international freight shipments include high growth sectors such as pharmaceuticals, office equipments and electronic equipment sectors besides those that have high value to weigh products. There is shortage of trained manpower in the Indian aviation sector and there is a need to gear up aviation education and training in the country keeping in mind the future boom in the industry. Thank you.